NBSS and uh, LUP. And also he has awarded, he has been um, awarded with the uh, best post award. Uh, more than three awards he has received for that uh, research work. And uh, apart from that, uh, he has uh, uh, he has been a reviewer for more than uh, five journals, including soil and uh, tillage research, current science, and Indian Journal of Agriculture Science, and uh, Journal of the Indian Society of Soil Science, and also Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And uh, he has uh, uh, kindly consent, I mean, has given consent uh, to deliver a uh, lecture on management of soil resources uh, for sustainable production. Of course, uh, he is uh, actively involved in this aspect. So he has uh, uh, kindly accepted to give uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, talk on this uh, topic. Now may I request uh, Dr. Cartesian to deliver on this uh, topic. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice words. Respected ma'am, thank you for calling me as an external examiner and it is a long pending. After one month we have finalized the date and you thought of that it will become after Pongal you are thinking that and but it has been rushed up and it has been fixed on that. So I thank Kaleshwari ma'am and special thanks to the head of the division of Shanti ma'am. And uh, all, all other all members of the Prabhak and committee, committee members who have been cooperated in this morning session of this uh, Viva OC examination. So I, I am deeply indebted to the TNAU fraternity for calling me for this uh, program. So this is generally, this topic is an overview of everything, what NBSS is. And uh, before going that, I just I will introduce what NBSS is. Actually, NBSS LEP, it is under the umbrella of Indian Council of Agriculture Research and it is the custodian of the Indian soils and the database. So whatever and recently the government of India has authorized NBSS LUP as a custodian of the database of Indian soils and in the recent gazette also issued by the government of India it has been stated directly stated in the national Geo geospatial policy stated that NBSS uh, is, it is mentioned in the National Gazette and uh, as well as the Pradhan Mantri uh, PM KSY project also. So till now, uh, till now this kind of uh, uh, name has not given to NBSS LEP. So we are having the five regional centers, five regional centers covering throughout the, to cover the whole, uh, whole India. So the northern region has been covered by the northern region of the Delhi. The northern region is covered by Delhi, and western region is covered by Udaipur, and uh, southern region is covered by Bangalore, and eastern region, northeastern region is covered by Jorat, and eastern region is by Kolkata. So these five centers uh, is our regional centers, and we are headquartered at Nagpur. And Nagpur is the region uh, headquarter of all the soil survey activities. So, so mainly this mandate, so whatever, this is a normal question that NBSS LUP will not give map to anyone, they will not give the data to anyone and this is the normal thing. But generally NBSS LUP is a map making institute. Whatever the mandate we have, that doesn't matter. What people understand, that matters. People understand as a data generator and map making, map making unit. But our mandate is this. So always people will tell that they are developing the data from the public money, but they are not sharing the data. Even the advanced country like USA and UK doesn't have a data sharing policy. ICR is also not having a data sharing policy. So we can't able to share the data as, uh, as easily as the people ask. You are also pay, you are also paid by the public money and we are also paid by the public money, but we have to obey by the rules and regulation which has been given by the ministry. But even a none of the developed country doesn't have a data sharing policy. So ICR is also not having a data sharing policy. That is the reason that data sharing has been, uh, data sharing is in a problem till now. So. <coughs> 
it is a map making institute we actively develop in the research uh, research programs uh, research activities and research programs and the first time this institute come into limelight when they have developed the soil resource mapping that srm map srm map 250000 scale map so after that 250000 scale map scale map only the nbs lep came to the limelight and after that nbs uh, srm map they have gone to the larger scale as well from 1 lakh million scale map and uh, million scale then 50000 and now we are going to the 10000 scale map and apart from this 10000 scale map it is not exactly 10000 scale map it is based upon this uh, uh, cadastral map which is available according to the different state policies so it varies from 8000 to 16000 so different uh, different states are having different cadastral uh, scale so accordingly the scale varies so we are go going to the uh, larger scales larger scale means 8000 to 16000 so in karnataka we are going something 7600 and something that scale level we are going but generally we are making it as a 10000 scale map and apart from this scale of map agroecological map and carbon map everything has been prepared by this our uh, bureau and this is the first product which has been given by the NBSS LEP by which the name has been came to the limelight and accordingly the larger scale map has been developed and now 50,000 to now we came to 10,000 scale map and after this map the development of this map only we came to know how much area has been degraded how much area has got saline and how much waste area this kind of data came into our uh, came into our hand so based on that only we are proposing this land resource inventory and this land resource inventory is due to the various shortages of the land resources at different state levels to arrest this loss of natural resources different plans and schemes has been developed by the state and central government under rural development different ministry agriculture uh, irrigation ministry agriculture ministry rural development ministry they are having a different plan and they are spending more than 2 lakh crore rupees of money including the subsidy amount also but there is no any perceptible change because we don't have the soil layer in it so the plans and schemes were implemented based upon the sample survey data all the plans are based upon sample survey data there is no any soil data so the, uh, the so there is a site specific land resource information system is required for successful successful planning that's only we came to this land resource inventory business so this land resource inventory will in turn paves a way for a sustainable agriculture to arrest the degradation and deterioration of the land resources and this committee, this LRI committee has been formed from 2007, uh, 2007 by the Planning Commission and then finally it has taken a shape in 2015 by that too from the help of the World Bank only it has a shape and now we are moving for the cell, uh, scientific land use planning and <clears throat> the National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture give a detailed report on 2009 and based on that only the detailed report, uh, detailed scale of uh, 4,000 to 16,000 scale has been fixed in this land resource inventory. So first state to take up this land resource inventory is Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. These are all the pioneer states and Tamil Nadu and Karnataka is fully funded by the World Bank and Tamil Nadu has told that they have already completed the 50,000. They are well versed in the soil. All data are layer is available in the soil. So Tamil Nadu don't, uh, doesn't go on for the 10,000 scale immediately, but partially it has started the Tamil, uh, partially it has also started under the PMKSY project. So in general, uh, there is a difference. There is a difference between a map and a soil map. That is the basic things that we have to understand. So we are developing a soil map. A soil map, soil map is the mapping a variability. The soil variability has to be mapped. So every map, the soil map is a very tedious process. If you can see, there are a different types of, there are four profiles will be there. At a different landscape, from ridge to upland to valley, there are different profiles will be there. 
in the same geology but we have to mark the variability that is the that is the task which has been given and that task has to be marked in the mapping process and this is a tedious process which this institute is doing so in the same black soil region you can see in a ridge you can see the shallow soil and in mid ridge you can see the medium deep and in the valley you can see the deep soils similarly different variations are there and different variations has to be marked and it has to be mapped similarly for the red soils as well so ultimately the lri is a diagnostic report which we are developing and this report is for all the purposes for soil water conservation and enhancing productivity crop diversification because it is a conglomeration it is a conglomeration data of various department so this is a diagnostic report and which will serve for the all the departments that's only it is a diagnostic report that we are telling so it, what is the uniqueness of that lri this database the database will be updated for every every 10 years the database will be upda updated so that the data which we are generating that will be valid at least for 30 years more than 30 years it will be valid so that is the main uniqueness of the lri lri project so finally at the end of the day we will be making a digital library so this is the digital agriculture and a digital agriculture uh, the national digital agriculture is also sponsoring in this lri project and finally a national digital library will be developed so that an integrated of the spatial and non spatial data to meet the requirement of the all land based interventions of watershed development departments including all horticulture sericulture animal husbandry environment forestry rural development so on and so forth so based on this that based on this L lri we are empowering the farmer so these are all the things which so this is the ultimately what we are we what we are doing that's only we want to in pmk was si project also they have told wherever the government project has been implemented 10% of area has to be in the first 5 year we have to survey 10% of the area in that area only the government project has to be implemented so every state has to be surveyed 10% of area first 5 years through lri in that area only lri uh, in that area only the government project will be impl imp can be implemented so every state is in has to have complete the lri in future in next 10 to 15 years all the the whole area has to be covered by lri so all the state governments are moving towards lri and all all are coming to nbss lep where nbss lep is playing a, a technical partner because we don't have a manpower to go for the survey for all these things so we are have, we are have, um, supporting them technically so by this lri enables the site specific planning implementation monitoring and every digital support soon and finally the digital library will be clear will be created so based on this we i am introducing my nbss lp that what we are doing so the major thing is that we have you should understand what is the soil map so many people that doesn't understand what is the soil map so mapping the variability is very much important in the soil map that's only i want to emphasize that uh, that mapping variability is a very critical thing and mapping the variability cannot be done by remote sensing purpose or with the satellite data it is fully of the manual purpose and all pedons will be and the change of pedon mini pits uh, mini pit master pit every every pit will be dug so that by that correlation we will be identify that line that simple line cannot be the drawn the map which has been a simple line has been drawn in that map that is not a simple line for that line there are uh, the thousands of rupees has been spent for a single line it is not by in the digital soil mapping process it is just by the color variation or tone variation they will draw the map and it will tell that it is but dsm is not a map it is a property map it is not a soil map it is a property map and what we are creating that is a soil map 
and there is a difference between soil map and a map so that is the basic thing that you have to understood and we are developing a soil map <coughs> so so what why this pro, why this growth due to this population growth which has been developed uh, by the, the addition of 100 every 1 billion people uh, 1 billion people has been added in an every decade now finally because which has been 1 billion has been added for the last 100 years now it has been added every 10 years we are adding for adding up 1 million 1 million population for globally so these are all the common data which you have been seen through uh, by two, 2015 what we want where we go what is the projected demand and what what are all the things but the land will remain same the land will not be expanded so whatever the things which are all available we have to go 1.5 times more productions in cereals pulse food everywhere we have to go for more than 1.5 one for one minimum 1.5 times so ultimately for what to do for this we have to go for sustainable soil management for sustainable soil management there are different characteristics and these characteristics are academic characteristics and what government has thought of that regarding that sustainable management these things and in that only sustainable management system only government thought of that soil health care system and in soil health care system and finally it has been thrusted on the state government and finally based upon this this is the data which they are having these are all the soils which are all deficient in nitrogen phosphorus potassium and then they have gone for the soil health card uh, they thought of a new scheme has to be developed due to the decline factor productivity and declining organic matter status and emerging nutrient deficiency they gone to the national soil health policy and uh, they have gone for the national soil health card schemes and now at the end of this day uh, last three years the whole state government machinery has been involved in the soil health card scheme and now we have developed more than 21 crore data we have developed and now the soil health card scheme has been completed and now they are having 21 crore uh, data in their hand and now they are giving give me the product what we what we have to do with this 21 crore uh, data and when we put geospatially the 21 crore data into that half of the data goes goes to bay of bengal half of goes half goes to arabian sea half goes to nepal bhutan and some goes to europe europe also and this kind of data they are have generated 78 percentage of data is 70 more than 78 percentage of data it cannot be used by the soil health card system soil health card whatever the money which have put on that more than 78 percentage of the data doesn't have a proper geospatial uh, things so ultimately we couldn't able to develop a product out of the soil health card and ultimately we are getting only 10 to 15 percentage of data in a usable format and now again they are blaming what you people are doing <laughs> did what agriculture university did what the central government university did you are the technical partner but they have not involved us as a technical partner they have involved state government machineries and now they are when there is problem comes they started blaming so this soil health card system now it has been winded up and now there is nothing is going to come from that uh, soil health card again the the basic thing uh, all soil scientists has opposed the soil health card system during the starting of the program itself there are two type of properties everyone know that it is an inherent property dynamic property and uh, everyone is going through the dynamic properties and in soil uh, quality analysis also mostly these uh, 10 to 12 parameters that dynamic properties has been mapped in the soil health curve and none of the inherent properties has been collected in the soil health curve so in the soil health curve if we go uh, and ultimately one of the objective is the development of the soil quality soil quality parameters that's only we we couldn't able to develop any any indices from the data which has been generated so now they want to uh, with this data they want to demarket which is the high low this kind of area they have to demarket and in that area now they are having uh, several program one district one crop uh, per drop more crop these everything they have to integrate into one system based upon the soil data 
but none of the people are going to get anything about the soil data so everything is because all the soil data has been redundant so now we this uh, developing the soil indices came to nbss lep to develop a soil indices based upon the soil health card then only we can able to found that 78 percentage of data is lying here and there and nothing is coming within the india indian boundary boundary line itself so there are for this understanding i am telling there is so there is uh, two types of uh, data inherent uh, inherent properties and dynamic properties all the property which has been map, mapped right this is a dynamic property and inherent you might be knowing that uh, soil moisture control section the soil moisture control section means the top 100 cm of soil the top 100 cm of the soil will support all the dynamic parameters this top 100 cm of the soils inherent property will support the dynamic properties of the surface so you have to map the inherent properties inherent properties of the soil whatever the soil depth which we are taking that you have to take the soil moisture control section that is our recommendation but everyone is going for we are against that 0 to 15 and 0 to 30 cm but uh, we are against bopal institute and bopal institute uh, you people are digging profile nothing use of it but we have justified we have published many data also the data which the soil quality which has been developed through 0 to 15 and 0 to 30 uh, 0 to 15 also we have analyzed the all these state level analysis has been done and 0 to 30 and 0 to 100 soil moisture control section and all the data has been correlated with the respective crop productivity by giving the weightage and everything it has been correlated the zero to the soil moisture control sections data has very good correlations and very good correlation with the yield parameters so that is the thing that we are uh, telling that all the soil quality actually the soil quality itself the analyzing soil quality itself it is a simple uh, data processing technique it is a just an uh, statistical tool and this statistical tool also supports the uh, soil moisture control section so whatever the, this soil moisture control sections you know, when we are going for this soil moisture control section the principal component and uh, inherent parameter will come out to the principal component analysis whereas if you go in the 0 to 50 cm 15 cm soil organic carbon nitrogen uh, nitrogen this kind of dynamic properties will come in the pca analysis so these kind of vast difference you can get it and the correlation uh, fits better in this soil moisture control section this uh, soil quality fits better in the soil moisture control section so whenever you will go for any soil moisture uh, soil quality analysis just soil moisture control section has to be taken so that automatically you need not want to concentrate the inherent property automatically in the pc analysis the inherent property will come out automatically the clay will come out clay will come out bulk density will come out cec will come out which will not come in that 0 to 15 or 15 to 30 cm of the soil that we have did for the whole maharashtra region and we came out with added this uh, productivity data has been correlated with the cotton soybean uh, the major crop of varda and the western maharashtra all the area we have correlated and we got we got a bet, better fit in this soil moisture control section so and this paper has been already published in katana and uh, so this is a well accepted uh, these things so this uh, lri which we have ultimately we got the prime minister award also for this lri and uh, apart from this uh, this is uh, a <coughs> micro morphology uh, actually i am concentrating on some of these things in pedal uh, in pedology also we are having in nbss lep we are having micro morphological in the whole southeast asia nbss is the first division which we have developed the micro morphology structure micro morphology it is just a micro pedology and uh, it is a, just a general concept that whatever the things which is happening in the macro form that will happen in micro form also same concept that so what whatever the soil processes which is happening in the macro form that has elevation happening in macro means it has to be happen in micro form it it should happen in a uh, in a slide also so that is the general understanding of micro morphology 
so this micromorphology uh, this micromorphology study has been developed just to decode the genesis genesis of the soils and uh, kubiana is the father of the micropedology and we had a one one important uh, achievement in this micropedology because uh, micromorphology that black soil doesn't uh, elevation in black, black soil is uh, is due to the falling of the soil through the crevices this kind of things which we have read in our books and other kind of things that we have uh, we have with the use of micromorphology we objected that that is not the criteria that increase in clay content in the subsurface is not due to the self churning soil that kind of things that we might have been seen whenever a black soil will be there there will be a crevices one squirrel will be there and and that the, it will put that uh, soil inside like that the diagram will be we might be seen but that is not the case the increase in clay content in the subsurface soil for black soil is not due to the soil through the crevices falling through the crevices it is uh, that that uh, identification has been done that genesis part that elevation part has been done by this micro micromorphology study by srs division with uh, dr paul and uh, bhattacharya we have we have made it and uh, uh, what is that this uh, slowly we will uh, the, this kind of clay elevation process this kind of voids will be developed in black soil this kind of voids will be developed in these voids you can see there will be a brown color a brown color will be there the finer clay particle will move on the corner of these uh, voids and it will go to the down uh, uh, down side so this is the reason the clay content in the Mm, black soil is getting increased so clay elevation is due to the uh, clay elevation is happening in black soil due to the micro uh, this uh, fine particles moving through the voids it is not due to the soil falling to the crevices so this kind of and it is accepted and it is published also and uh, similarly in uh, soil micromorphology the pedology pedology has as a different terms similarly micromorphology is also having a different terms called micro uh, microbial uh, micro pedo futures similarly for in sari we are having fabric like that soil fabric soil structure soil mic microstructure this everything directly not related uh, n all the uh, terminologies are directly to the geological aspect it will be but it is well understood and uh, this is one of the clay elevation part which we have done through this micromorphology and the second part is that uh, the identifications of carbon uh, calcium carbonate pedo features morning i told the calcium carbonate there are two type of calcium carbonate will, is the non pedogenic pedogenic carbonate and non pedogenic carbonate and uh, <coughs> pedogenic carbonate is harm to the farmer and non pedogenic format is um, is uh, farmer friendly and uh, non pedogenic carbonate will increase the soil water nutrient retention and soil water movement and everything non pedogenic carbonate will will help the farmers whereas the pedogenic carbonate will harm the farmer it will return the nutrients it will make crust all this kind of formation and uh, there is no any identification till now we don't have any analytical procedure to identify the pedogenic carbonate or non pedogenic carbonate we have an analytical procedure to identify calcium carbonate but whether it is a pedogenic or non pedogenic that is that we don't have any identification and people are developing then also could they couldn't able to and there is a only technique that have to ident identify these pedo future is through the micromorphological studies and this micromorphological study by this micromorphology study only in this non pedogenic carbonate will be concentric rings and it will be uh, a clear cut boundary will be there in this non pedogenic carbonate whereas in pedogenic carbonate there will be a diffused boundary will be there how the slides will be prepared actually that is one of the things uh, how the slides will be prepared this is the box this is the box in that uh, micromorphology and this is simply an aluminum box 
and this box is called as cubiana box and cubiana is the father of micropedology and this uh, this is a uh, this is a pedon and this box the center of the box has to be inserted inserted into the soil and which is the upper part and which is the lower part that has to be marked by the these things because if at all we are doing for elevation study we should know which is top and which is bottom so the main thing is that whenever sample collection is there you have to write which is top and which is bottom and these soils this soil the collected soil will be brought to the laboratory and this soil will be brought to laboratory and this soil will be made into rock it will be made into rock by the polyesterine resin resin ethanol we will make a mixture and we will put the soil into that resin and that resin will be left to dry for more than a month and then finally that resin that resin will be dip uh, resin resin will be covered by the soil so after that that whole block will be like this and center soil will be there so based with the diamond cutting we will cut that uh, block brick like block is there it with the diamond cutter we will cut and then that cut part will be fixed into the slide and that slide will be rubbed in a carborundum powder for more than a month and then finally after after rubbing more than a month you can get this kind of slide so for preparation of one slide it will take more than 3 to 4 months it will take so there is no any easy technique in these things and while rubbing carborundum powder also that <laughs> powder will get into your nose and it will get choked since it is a highly hard material so people will uh, that is the reason that people will avoid this micromorphology and people will not doing this kind of studies and our lab is also now nowadays it has been not doing that much work on this micromorphology but we want to revive it because it is the only laboratory in the uh, now we are in the mode of reviving the whole pedology so in this pedology we have to revive in this uh, laboratory as well so these are all the two main achievements of the division the calcium carbonate and elevation so for that only i i made it to understand what micromorphology is and how micromorphology and based on that one we can have different different genesis studies as well and with this micromorphology study also we have i have surveyed one and another genesis spot i have surveyed in this uh, this part this is uh, chatisgarh plateau this chatisgarh plateau is a complex geology it is a complex geology and there is no any geology is available which can generate which can give you a black soil you can see it is a purple shale it is dolomite limestone dolomite argillite clay shale gluconite stromlite bedded limestone but when i entered into this area this is the raipur area raipur and near to raipur uh, near to raipur from 50 km from raipur you can see a deep black soil a deep black soil then we couldn't able to identify where this black soil came because we are from the black soil region akpur is a black soil region that is one of the main black soil region of the world that much deep basaltic alluvium after this australia and this thing nagpur is the one of the deep so we couldn't able to ascertain how this black soil came here and uh, the agriculture practices which they are doing in this region chota nagpur plateau is uh, this uh, chatisgarh plateau uh, plateau is they will have three times rice three times our public distribution rice are all from that areas rice only that uh, and the motta motta ma irukra rice irukengala ellame ange irundha varu rice and the in that rice three times they are cultivating that rice and they are uh, going for uh, uh, they are not going for uh, seedling uh, planting planting uh, broadcasting and minimum yield is 4.7 minimum yield is 4.7 5 tons minimum yield national average is uh, 2 tons their average yield is 5 uh, tons then we got that is black soil and we got astonished what is wrong and they are not at all uh, irrigating the rice crop also they are giving a sprinkler irrigation to the rice crop 
so these are all the future we we got astonished how these things are happening because we are from tamil nadu we are from rice growing area and for rice they are having this much of uh, uh, the they they sweat and uh, they sweat into uh, blood like that and they will develop this kind of rice but they are, they will not go for weeding also and uh, the weed will also not come that much because that they are spraying through sprinkler irrigations so weed is also not that much then we got uh, what is happening with these people <laughs> why what is wrong uh, then we have gone for very detailed uh, survey in this area and then we can we got all these uh, these things actually this has created lot of uh, uh, these things with us then we have gone first we have gone for geological map geological map of that area first where the soil comes then we will identify where what is the characteristics of the soil then in and around in chatisgarh there is no way basalt is there in here there is one small cap is there this is the extension of the michael range that michael range madhya pradesh michael range one 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 narrow protrusion was there from that narrow protrusion one river is flowing that river is also flowed long back and that river has carried out that alluvium alluvium from 400 km alluvium that has been deposited over there and that is in that uh, all are fine clay all are fine clay if uh, if a lorry enters into their uh, field means half of the lorry will enter <laughs> will be drowned like that it will be so that kind of fine clay it is so that uh, from uh, michael range it has th this is the basaltic single cap from this basaltic cap this river has been flowed this is the cap this river has been cutting across these uh, granitic uh, granites and it has been reached this area and this whole area has been deposited with the black soil and all the black soils are very fine black soils and then again we came to uh, why this black soils actually the black soils in nagpur are sim simple uh, similar to rock uh, similar to rock we cannot able to break, break that uh, black soils but uh, the soils which is here it is it is simply like a powder so again the, there is a lot of uh, then uh, then we came to we did x ray analysis of this all the sample then we found paligorskite in this uh, paligorskite uh, actually that uh, normally this uh, this purple shale this purple shale they have they are having paligorskite in this area paligorskite will not allow the soil uh, water to enter down to the uh, down from that subsurface area so in this paligorskite this paligorskite was there and over that the black soil has came and deposited and uh, this uh, they are growing rice in this area and this rice has been grown by the sprinkler irrigation and very minimum amount of water and that water is used very efficiently and that will not go down the down to the, after 30 cm it will not go because paligors usually paligorskite is a degrade it is always considered as a negative mineral but there it is acting as a positive mineral and water use efficiency is increased and uh, there is uh, there is dioctahedral trioctahedral smectite two smectite as that so the combination of two smectite has been very rare to see there you can see the di and trioctahedral smectite so due to the uh, existence of the di and trioctahedral smectite the nutrient use efficiency is increased is increased because uh, ammonia which is uh, used for rice crop and potassium this both has been hold by these two smectite and it has been gradually it, it is releasing to the plant and these farmers are not putting excessive fertilizer also like our farmer they are not putting excessive fertilizer they will take a dap and they will throw and they will go that's all and they will give one sprinkler irrigation that's all and they are getting 5 tons of irrigation and we are getting all the rice through that public distribution through us so this is one of the very interesting thing which we have found that's only i have shown for this so ultimately we gone this kind of data so we have gone for drainage analysis and other kind of things so it has been found that due to this uh, black soil region it has been deposited <coughs> 
and the presence of pedagogy actually pedagogy doesn't attract the people because always it pedagogy people will see that it is a dry subject because we never uh, we never uh, correlate our subject with crop always we will see this uh, mineralogy also we will cut short with that and we will cut so people that is the reason that it is not getting attracted towards the students that is the, so in this uh, we have interacted the pedology with the edophology so when we interacted the pedology with the edophology immediately it is got up uh, approved and it is uh, within 6 month it is published also so this uh, uh, presence of paligorskate the presence of paligorskate also first time we have seen actually Uh, for sodic soil uh, we always we will take for classification of any sodic soil we will take only sodium sodium absorption ratio these are all the criteria which we will take but wherever the sodium content is more there only your magnesium content is also more so we are proposing that uh, wherever this sodium sodic soil you should also go for magnesium analysis the exchangeable magnesium analysis if the exchangeable magnesium analysis is more than more than one <coughs> then there is a chance of existing of this uh, paligorskite mineral mineral like that we are proposing that and this paligorskite mineral will give a peak uh, near to 10 similar to that mica mica only we will get that peak Mm, uh, and that peak from that peak we identified the presence of paligorskite and uh, for identifying of paligorskite is also again there is a we should not use any of these uh, particle size analysis which we are doing we should not use your uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, this uh, salt will nothing it has then it will get dispersed just you have to shake it with water and just you have to analyze this paligorskite uh, directly you put in put it into that x-ray diffractometer and then you have to go for analysis this paligorskite and uh, the presence of uh, just i told the presence of the di and tri octahedral smectite which which we can see this di and tri octahedral smectite has also seen in this due to which the edophology part has been Uh, linked and due to which the rice crop has been benefited by this area so actually before that before going to this kind of uh, analysis so we have, we have gone all this we have taken uh, along the river also we have taken a sample away from river also we have taken a sample so so that uh, the native soil and the deposited soil both has to uh, correlated with uh, equally so that we can get the exact picture of that area so wherever we have gone away we can be able to see the di and tri octahedral wherever we go towards the valley that is the deposited soil that is a pure di octahedral smectite which we can able to see so whenever we are targeting for any pedological studies that has to be linked with the edophology then our subject will be get more interesting that was our Uh, idea so actually this idea has been come due to the discontinuity abhi whenever we have seen that uh, black soil we dig a black soil for 150 cm suddenly we have seen a purple purple soil so these are all the major criteria so we have seen the lithological discontinuity also this lithological discontinuity only provoked us to see uh, to quest for that further uh, informations so there are different uh, identifications of this lithological discontinuity uh, <coughs> oxides and dithionate uh, iron oxides and dithionate ratios and uh, clay dithionate ratios so so this is this is the mixture of both and this is the normal black soils so a drastic difference are, have been seen in all the mineralogical aspects and titanium zirconium that stable elements ratios the ratios is also very drastically will be differ differing when whenever the things has been deposited the uh, ratio will be increased so these are all uh, some of these uh, studies which we have done we have did uh, through this pedology and uh, micromorphology that that we want to i want to share with you on this occasion thank you
you know better actually we had our head dr dk paul was our head he was very much interested in this subject so with the help of netherlands he has created this uh, micromorphology laboratory and uh, actually this uh, for that you doesn't mean that it is a very advanced instrument it's not an advanced instrument it is a very local type நம்ம இதில் அந்த லேத்து இதில் எல்லாம் பண்ணுற மாதிரி தான் இருக்கும் அந்த லேத்து அந்த மாதிரி இதில் எல்லாம் பண்ணி அந்த மாதிரி ஒர்க் பண்ணுற மாதிரி இருக்கும் பட் பீப்புள் ஆர் நாட் ஷோயிங் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஆன் தட் தட் இஸ் அ திங் ஆக்சுவலி இஃப் யூ இஃப் யூ ஹேண்டில் தட் கார்போ ரெண்டம் பவுடர்னா வித் இஃப் யூ ஹேண்டில் அ கார்போ ரெண்டம் பவுடர் டுவைஸ் அ டே நெக்ஸ்ட் டே யூ வில் நாட் கம் டு த லெபாரட்ரி for that alternative method also we are only developing one instrument so that is uh, that uh, we are making one cover that cover the one uh, robo like things will be there and that robo hand will be there it will rub inside itself and we will watch we will come and we will watch with the glass and other kind of things we will wear and we will come and watch and uh, we will stop it and uh, எது வரைக்கும் அது தேஞ்சிருக்குது அப்படின்ட்டு எடுத்துட்டு திரும்பி பார்த்துட்டு திரும்பி தேய்க்கிற மாதிரி அதே மாதிரி அதுக்கும் அந்த லேத்து இவங்கள்ட்டெல்லாம் வந்து நம் நம்ம தான் இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்ட்டை டெவலப் பண்ணணும் பட் தேர் இஸ் நோ எனி இன்ஸ்ட்ருமெண்ட் விச் இஸ் அவைலபிள் இன் ஆஸ் சச் வித் ஃபேப்ரிகேஷன்ஸ் பண்ணி தான் எடுக்கணும் நெதர்லாண்ட் பீப்புள் ஆர் கிவிங் ட்ரைனிங் தே ஆர் கிவிங் ட்ரைனிங் எஸ் மேம் தே ஆர் ஃபாலோவிங் தே ஆர் ஃபாலோவிங் we are not following pedology but to 2020 no we are not following pedology they are also not following pedology but still they are giving the revised usda taxonomy they have given a usda taxonomy 2023 revised taxonomy they have given they asked us to go to dsm we have gone to dsm but they are giving the revised taxonomy also they are only giving ah this concern ஐஆர்ஏல இருந்து ஒரு பையன் பிரசஞ்சித் ரே இப்போ போயிட்டு வந்திருக்கான் போயிட்டு ஒரு மாதம் ட்ரைனிங் எடுத்துகிட்டு வந்திருக்கான் மைக்ரோமார்ஃபாலஜிக்கு ரீசண்டாக அவன் தான் போயிருக்கான் ஆ மைக்ரோமார்ஃபாலஜிக்காக அவனே காசு செலவு பண்ணி போயிட்டு வந்திருக்கான் மைக்ரோமார்ஃபாலஜி கோர்ஸ் வந்து இந்த பிஹெச்டியில் வந்து இருக்கிறதுனால அப் அண்ட் டவுன் வந்து ஐஆர்ஐ பே பண்ணாங்க அப்புறம் அங்கே தங்கி இரு இருக்கிற பணம் அவனே செலவு பண்ணி அவன் போயிட்டு வந்திருக்கான் but they are giving training on micro micro but they are not giving for soil survey usda is not giving for soil survey but they are giving for micro micromorphology they are giving uh, by that that boy i can able to know that adu ipo in the revising that uh, pedology aspect la idella or or part ah vachi so in the forthcoming seminar we are planning to have a brainstorming session on pedology so that how to revive this pedology and what are all the other uh, other allied field which we have to develop on pedology so that actually pedology is considered as a grammar of soil science so it is a grammar of soil science without a grammar you can't able to write english properly so if at all you want to be in soil science you have to be a, know the grammar of soil science that is the thing that we want to revive the pedology but people are telling that pedology errors is not there so why we have to study pedology so if you go with fertility and uh, like this kind of things so there will be a day that soil science division will convert into agronomy <laughs> so so that's only morning also i repeatedly i i asked prabhakaran also you just you concentrate on the soil processes instead of steel nugget this rs r square rms these are all the things that will add value to the value to your research but that is not the science you are for you are for you are here for soil science and if you leave your subject why you go to the other subject <laughs> statistics is not your subject statistics is her subject <laughs> and you are talking in her language <laughs> why you have to talk in her language you have to talk in your language so that is the thing that's only i am uh, in your whole thesis that was missing the soil process was missing that's only i was uh, here after after revival after revival of this uh, pedology program 
we will be giving this three months training program continuously in every year there will be a three months training program and 21 days training program which usually nbss lup was giving earlier so that will be revived first uh, then then, uh, then uh, all the state agriculture universities one teacher who can uh, who can teach the pedology properly they have to train so so these are all that agenda sir patak sir was telling and the director general was telling so ipo ellame stop aichu sir actually and the senior undanga and and the head line la irundanga paul sir ka adutha paul sir ka adutha line la irundanga avanga ellame vandu actually vandu and and the line vandu appadi miss aichu and the line miss aichu இப்போ டார்கெட்டட் பீப்புளுக்கு மட்டும் கொடுக்குறாங்க சார் இப்போ போக்ரான்னு ஒரு ப்ராஜெக்ட் இருக்குது ப்ராஜெக்ட் ஆன் கிளைமேட் ரெசிலியன்ட் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் பீப்புள் ஹூ ஆர் ஆல் இன்வால்வ் இன் போக்ரா அவங்களுக்கு மட்டும் ட்ரைனிங் கொடுக்குறாங்க அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் ஆஃபீஸர்ஸ் மட்டும் ட்ரைனிங் கொடுக்குறாங்க இந்த மாதிரி கொடுத்துட்டு இருக்கிறாங்க பட் ஒன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆல் இது வந்து அது அதுக்காக தான் பண்ணும் அவரு டிஜியும் வந்து சாயில் சயின்டிஸ்டா இருக்கிறதுனால இந்த தடவை வி ஆர் ஹோப்பிங் வி ஆர் வெரி மச் பாசிட்டிவ் அவரு அவரும் வருவாரு அப்படிங்கிறதுனால நான் ரொம்ப பாசிட்டிவா இருக்கிறேன் அவரு அவரு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் என்ன சொல்றாரு அப்படின்னா அவரு வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வந்து இந்த பிரெயின் ஸ்ட்ராமிங் செஷன் வச்சுட்டு ஒரு ஒயிட் பேப் ஒரு ஒயிட் பேப்பர் சப்மிட் பண்ணுவாங்க நாஸ்ல வந்து ஒரு ஒயிட் பேப்பர் இது பண்ணிட்டு நாஸ்ல எல்லாத்தையுமே வந்து ஒரு மீட்டிங் எல்லா ஸ்டாஃபையும் கூப்பிட்டு இப்ப நாக்பூரில் எல்லா அசிஸ்டன்ட் ப்ரொஃபஸரோ ப்ரொஃபஸரையோ கூப்பிட்டு நான் நாக்பூரில் கூப்பிட்டா நல்லா இருக்கு அது எல்லாத்தையுமே டெல்லி நாசில் கூப்பிட்டோம்னா நல்லா இருக்கும் அப்படின்னு டிஜி சொல்லிட்டு இருக்கார் செவன்டி சிக்ஸ் ஏன்னா செவன்டி சிக்ஸ் பீப்புள் ஹண்ட்ரட் பீப்புள்ஸ் மட்டும் வச்சு அவங்க ஒரு இதை பண்ணலாம் அந்த மாதிரி பண்ணுற மாதிரி ஐடியாவில் இருக்காங்க பட் அது என்ன தெரியல இப்ப எல்லாமே வந்து இப்ப எல்லாத்தையுமே வந்து எல்லாம் லார்ஜ் ஸ்கேல் மேப்பிங்ல எல்லாத்தையுமே போக சொல்லிட்டாங்க அந்த டென் டென் பர்சன்டேஜ் லார்ஜ் ஸ்கேல் மேப்பிங் இப்ப நெக்ஸ்ட் ஃபோர் இயர்ஸ்ல நீ யூ ஹாவ் டு கம்ப்ளீட் டென் பர்சன்டேஜ் ஆஃப் ஏரியா நெக்ஸ்ட் ஃபைவ் இயர்ஸ் யூ ஹாவ் டு கம்ப்ளீட் பிப்டி பர்சன்டேஜ் ஆஃப் ஏரியா அதுக்கு நீங்க எவ்வளவு ஃபண்ட் வேணுமோ அதை வாங்கிக்கோங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு டிஓ எல்ஆர்ட்ட கொடுத்துட்டாங்க ஆ எல்லாம் டிஓ எல்ஆர்ட்ட கொடுத்துட்டாங்க டிஓ எல்ஆர் வந்து டிஓ எல்ஆர் வந்து எங்கள்ட்ட கொடுக்குறாங்க டிஓ எல்ஆர் இதோட டெக்னிக்கல் பார்ட்னர் நாங்கள் ஹவு டு டூ இல்லை இல்லை நாங்கள் நாங்கள் இப்போ எந்த டேட்டாவும் ஜென்ரேட் பண்ணுறது இல்லைங்க சார் நோ ஜென்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் டேட்டா நவ் இட் வில் பி அவைலபிள் இன் இப்போ நிக் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் மாதிரி ஒரு பர்ஃபெக்ட் ஒரு ஒரு இண்டிபெண்ட் பிளாட்ஃபார்மில் வச்சிருவோம் இப்போ இப்போ ஆக்சுவலாக பணம் யார் கொடுக்குறாங்களோ அவங்க தானே டேட்டா வச்சுருப்பாங்க இப்போ டிஓ எல்ஆர் வந்து அந்த டேட்டாவுக்காக வந்து லைப்ரரி செப்பரேட் லைப்ரரி வந்து ஃபிக்ஸ் பண்ணிட்டாங்க இங்கே வேர்ல்டு வேர்ல்டு பேங்க் கர்நாடகாவோட ப்ராஜெக்ட் வந்து யூஎஸ் பெங்களூரில் இருக்கு லைப்ரரி ஸோ அதுக்கு வந்து அதோட இன்சார்ஜ் வந்து அவரோட கமிஷனர் ஒரு வாட்டர் ஷெட் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் கமிஷனர் அவர் அவர் அவரோட வேர்ல்டு பேங்க்கோட இஷ்யூ ஸோ நாங்களும் அதில் டேட்டா வந்து இது பண்ணால் நாங்கள் வியூ பண்ணிக்கலாம் பார்த்துக்கலாம் ஸோ யார் வேணாலும் அதை ஷேர் பண்ணிக்கலாம் ஸோ வி ஆர் டெக்னிக்கல் பார்ட்னர்ஸ் தட்ஸ் ஆல் So good evening all. Really it was a wonderful experience. Huh? Even we too learnt some micro-morphological uh, information. I think uh, especially for the second PhD, like we know told, uh, uh, previous year you studied courses, now it will be a refreshment to you. So this is the important from morning onwards we were discussing. And uh, uh, we have forgotten soil many times. Huh? That's what. So it, this is the core area. Do you, th- do you know that? In the last think tank program, we specifically gave, gave you a separate title, Pedology and Resource Inventory, and we have given thesis topic also. But none of the students, you now it is student choice. Now, the university is giving fellowship to all the students, and uh, 
uh, under the chairmanship of vice chancellor only they are choosing the topic also so none of the students uh, uh, took pedagogy topic actually even after uh, telling that we will provide for those thing is that the confidence level or the exposure level i hope so this is uh, this is the this is what the basic right so just to develop interest though of course uh, many of you may be first years I, I, i hope we can just uh, develop now we are going to enrich our um, uh, soil reference center also actually our, we will make a short visit here only in our next to our uh, uh, hod room we have tamil nadu soil reference center in 1996 it has been uh, inaugurated by uh, with the help of uh, isrik netherlands dr hari ishwaran might be uh, he was involved in the project dr nadrajan sir uh, i think you would have heard about his name uh, dr s nadrajan dr sivaswami so uh, so the entire uh, tamil nadu in different agro climatic zones the uh, that profile and we have exhibited 15 profiles representing different zones so that is uh, mostly on the undergraduate post graduate students are being exposed to that and now with the another uh, funding from our uh, uh, tnau we are going to strengthen uh, with another uh, 10 profiles for which we are approaching uh, nbss bamlu Bang- regional center also that is where we have actually uh, we revived the unit uh, when i was uh, the former director nr i was very particular this has to be why because Uh, all our uh, things have been branched off especially in tna you know there is a separate environmental science department so very little only we can work on pollution also here because they have their mandate and we have a separate nano science department ah uh, <laughs> and remote is also separated from soil science remote is also separated you met jagadish sir no so now only the nutrient management aspect is in the main core so our uh, aim is uh, definitely we have to bring in uh, at least uh, especially the younger generation to the soil resource inventory or pedology unit so that is also our uh, vision actually so we'll see you know, as per your say for something comes at a national level uh, definitely we will also be a part of it we will try to bring our soil back actually otherwise as you say now newton management is spelt not only by agronomist it is being discussed by all the disciplines horticulturist physiologist uh, everything everywhere it is being discussed so thing is that now we have to uh, concentrate on our clay mineralogy minerals uh, and your geology all basic things still we have to concentrate and you are telling lot of things how a mineral or a geology is being linked to Uh, our edaphology aspect so that will be a boom so really it was a wonderful thing and a eye opening session for all of us so we thank profusely on behalf of the department of soil science and agriculture chemistry directorate of natural resource management tnau and on behalf of dean school of post graduate studies who are very particular in organizing the uh, guest lecture with the external exam- examiner why because you will be coming from different fields so naturally your expertise will be exposed to the students and the faculty that will be boon to us if in future if any nbss is uh, coming forward for any type of collaboration or any linkage very well i think you are uh, you people are there very well you can uh, uh, contact us and we will be very happy to join with you in carrying out any project or as a technical partner or in what way you feel like this is also another thing i would like to register here so thank you once again and thank all the faculty and student friends for having with us for this session thank you all very much